SI 2.3a, how do I create and analyze line graphs? And so we're going to be talking about that today. Um, just as a reminder, you need six things for every line graph. You need to make sure that you have a title. So you need to make sure you have that. Oops. So we got that for this one. We need we have an x and y axis. I look here, I got it here and here. Okay, we got days. I got a scale. I can look here and I see the scale is counting every 20 between the lines. And at a midpoint, I see a line here. That would be half of 20, which would be 10. Uh, data, I see that there's data here. I see a graph, so we have it. We have an x-axis label, which is the day. And we have a y-axis label, which is degrees and Fahrenheit. So we have all the parts, so we're good for this graph. Um, but I want to talk about a couple of things concerning those. So um, let's take a look here. Um, looking at the same graph, temperatures in New York City, we see um, some increases in data over time. Oftentimes, a data table um, will give us some data, but we can't really understand exactly what it means until we put it in a graph. And so we have a line graph here, and a line graph will always show change over time or a distance, you know, change over time. And so when I look at this, I'm looking at the days, which is a typical time. Okay, another one would be minutes, seconds, hours, um, and different times there. And then I have a change in data in the form of degrees in Fahrenheit. So we're looking at temperatures of New York City, and we see a change over the days. And as it, what we're seeing is, I see a general trend that it's increasing as the days go on. And so a trend... What I'm thinking about with a trend is, is simply this. A trend is when three or more pieces of data show consistent increases and decreases. Okay, so if I see in three or more pieces of data, I see an increase. I see that there's a trend there, and that often will give me predictions or inferences about that data. I could think for this is that we're having a uh, heat wave, or, you know, if this is in the spring, we're seeing a change in temperature. Maybe it's a warm front that came in. Or uh, we might be thinking, too, that it might be getting a little bit more humid. We might see storms coming soon. So we might see some changes in this temperature, either up or down. But I can make a prediction that tomorrow, based on this data, will be higher than what it currently is. So it's going to go up um, based on what I see here. I see four pieces of data as it's increasing. So I can tell trend-wise that it's going to be up higher on day seven. I don't know that for sure. It's a prediction based on previous collected data. Okay, so um, I can learn a lot of information about a uh, data table and some information if I put it into a line graph. Remember, line graphs are change over time, when something changes over a period of time. Okay, when making a line graph, we're going to look at that today. How do I create one? And... Uh, we're going to first make sure we have a title for it. X and Y axis are labeled, and X must be in the order of the data table. So for here, it's going to be in the time of hours. So remember, we're going to be going as hours go on. Um, and then we need to figure out what is the max of that data table. So I look at these in, uh, dependent variables, the data recorded. My highest amount is 68 degrees. Okay? And so my line graph should have that 68 degrees is covered. I can't have my line graph here and then 68 is all the way up here somewhere. I need to have it in my data table in my uh, line graph somewhere. So I need to make sure it's there. Um, and I need to cover that in my scale. So what I want to do is I want to think about when I'm creating my scale, I want to divide the scale into equal, they're called intervals. Okay, intervals is spaces between either numbers or values. and this is in your notes, each uh, graph data for each group using dots. Okay, we're not drawing lines yet, we're just drawing the dots where the data meets. And then we're, con and we're going to connect the dots from left, which is over here, to right. Left to right. Okay, and so let's take a look at 
this one right here. We have our data that we collected from our last part here, and we're going to graph the temperatures on 10, 3, 12. So this is from a little bit ago, but we're going to make sure we have our title. So temp on 10, 3, 12. So that's last um, October 3rd. And so if I have a temperature, we're seeing that the temperature is changing over a period of time. So we're thinking line graph. So we're thinking it's going to be a line graph for this. And so I need to start thinking, um, okay, we're going to put our times as our x axis. So crisscross going across. This is our time. And we're going to put for each line 8, 10, 12, 2, and 4. So these would be AM, these are PM over here. Sorry, not Tim, time. Um, and then over here, we need to figure out, okay, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 lines, and my maximum is 68. So if I count by twos, would I get to beyond 68? Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Nope. Um, what if I count fives? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Nope. Maybe if I round up my max to be around 70 and divide it by, you know, I have 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 lines. So let's divide it by 7. That gives me that each line represents 10. So let's see if that works. 10. Seventy. And so that works. Wow. Let's do that. Okay, so that works because we have our maximum covered and we start at zero. And this is going to be our temp. And so now we're going to start here. 8 a.m. is 51 degrees. So I'm going to look here and I see 8 a.m. And I don't see exactly 51. So I'm going to estimate as to where I think 51 would be. It's not close to 60. It's closer to 50. So I'm going to put a dot right here. Okay. Then I go to 10 a.m. It's 55. So that's right around the center here. Because 55 is between, is equal between uh, 50 and 60. And then we got 62, so I'm going to put it up here a little bit above 60. And then 68, that's all the way up here. And then 63, so I'm going to put it right here. So we have our data, and we are going to now take this and draw some lines. So I'm going to get the line tool. I'm going to start at zero. Now, obviously, it's not starting from zero degrees Fahrenheit, but we need to do that to represent our data. We're going to go here. We're going to draw our lines. Please make them straight. And then we connect our dots. Um, well, that does it for today's lesson. We've been talking about how do we create line graphs, how do we use them to understand data and um, analyze them further. So with that on your whisk, I want you to think about another example that you would use a line graph. Think about when it's best used. And I want you to create another example on when to use a line graph outside of what we did in this lesson. So with that, I'm going to leave you to your whisk and uh, have a great rest of your time in this lesson.